here they are, right on time for the demonstration of the three iron crosses, the Papa Heads Hardwired Master Course 11 to 50. What exactly are those, you might ask? And let's read the brochure first. Papa Heads new Hardwired Master Course signature string sets have been co-developed with Metallica's James Hetfield over the past decade to best meet his demanding performance requirements. This signature set consists of James' preferred 1150 gauge combination using thicker paradigm core wire and plasma enhanced nickel plated steel wrap wire. They are ideal for James' aggressive style and technique offering a heavier sound with extra pitch stability. The plain strings consist of paradigm core wire with brass RPS reinforcement at the bow end for added strength and tuning stability. Thicker sound, added pitch stability, heavier core to wrap ratio, never before offered gauge combination 11 to 50. Well, I haven't been that excited about trying new strings ever since I started playing guitar and here they are, the Ernie Ball Papa Head signatures. People seem to have a lot of questions about them so I made a video. First impressions, they look cool. James designed them and it's like he used the sharpie to write everything. They are in this metal case that it's supposed to be highly collectible. I like the green color. What do we got written here? Papa Heads, Hardware, Master Course and then we got the custom gauge. It is 11, 14, 18 plane, 28, 38, 50. What else we got? James Hetfield written on the side of the box, lovely. What else we got here? Ernie Ball, James Hetfield again and this plane back with a serial number on it. Without further ado, let's open them up. They're hinged on the top side and here we go. In here we got, oh yeah, three packs of strings. Looks to me like a plain black pack with a green sticker. Yep, it is a sticker. We have one for the ESP, one for the LTD Iron Cross and one more for Uncle Muti over here. It is time I open one of those packs up to see what's inside. Hopefully there are strings. And of course I forgot my scissors, so let me go grab them. Here they are. Ooh, I feel excited, it's like opening up a main road or something or a bridge that, I, that has been built recently. And we cut here. It's always good to have a sealed package like this because the strings in it last longer. My guess is that those are individually packed and indeed they are. The same cool Sharpie style of writing. We got 50, made in USA of course. Then we got the 38, 28, 18P, 14, 11. They're all there. Those are gonna be the first to go on the ESP Iron Cross. And now I'm gonna do something even more satisfying. Along with the strings, I bought some White Fang Headfield Signature Picks. And I'm gonna use this lovely green box to keep my picks in. It's not gonna be a coke stash or anything. Oh my god, these scissors are dull. Just like me. Looking at the size of this thing, I'm thinking I bought not enough picks. And yeah. Now I gotta fill the damn box with something. I'm gonna put some more anyway. I'm gonna buy some more white fangs anyway because this pick is amazing. I was using Utex sharp picks. But after trying the White Fang, I decided to switch to them. They're actually that good. And I'm gonna fill the box with some more picks anyway. Enough fooling around with the box, time to install those three packs on these three guitars and give you my opinion about them. Since this is the first time I'm installing those Papa Head strings, I thought you guys might wanna come along for the ride. And this is me talking unscripted. First of all, I have already locked the bridge and tailpiece as I said and I'm really curious how those headfield strings would feel. They're supposed to be the paradigm hexagonal core. Uh, we shall see about that. I'm carefully guiding the strings not to touch the body or the top or the cross or anything. I don't want any unnecessary scratches on my guitar. I've already angled the holes on those tuners so the string feeds straight through. Then I guide it until it's a little bit slackened like this. You lock it from the back, not too much, and then 
you rotate by a little bit over 90 degrees and you do that for all the rest of the strings I'm probably gonna cut here because I'm gonna bore you with too much talking while changing all of those strings I got the headfield set for the other two guitars as well so this is gonna be a cool comparison not only between guitars but a good experience with three sets of those strings so you tighten just a little bit you don't tune just yet you should get the strings at an angle like this angle uh, locked from the back and continue that step for the rest of the strings these are locking tuners you don't need to wrap the string around them leave it like this feed it through lock it from the back rotate until there's an angle like this don't cut those just yet because we're gonna do some setup when I'm sure that everything is correct then I'm gonna cut them 18p let's go pop ahead I sure hope those are nice because they do look nice and I already had a friend of mine who bought those strings from me from Tomon the German shop he said that he already tried them on a guitar and they feel nice feed it through guide it through the bridge lock it from the back rotate as simple as that and we got two more to go and we're set sometimes with the thinner strings like the plain strings you might want to wrap them around the tuner but those spurzel locking tuners are so good that I trust them not to slip and I don't need to wrap them around the tuning pegs just like that and the last one wow three minutes almost four I'm getting pretty good at this I've restrung God knows how many guitars but it's, it's always a pleasure when you know how to do it when you have a pattern it's actually easier and it doesn't feel like a chore and there we go now I'm gonna tune it I'm gonna check the intonation and then I'm gonna cut the string edges those are the papa hits for you first time installing them I can't wait to test them You've probably already seen Papa Head explaining about his strings in the Ernie Ball video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Pretty much he explained that he down picks like a damn beast and he lacks the tuning stability from other string packs that he was using. It is not only tuning stability though, it's about string strength. And I know some people that are also down picking like damn monsters and they always break the 5th and the 6th string. Crazy right? And this is exactly why they used the Paradigm Core. If you haven't heard about Ernie Ball Paradigm series, they are supposed to be extremely strong and withstand people that are playing like damn beasts. Literally on top of this Paradigm Core, you have the brass RPS reinforcement at the bow end for added strength and tuning stability and you can clearly see it when looking at the strings near the tailpiece. Heavy hitters will strongly benefit from those strings, but as we know, tuning stability is not only about strings. Your hardware matters and your overall guitar quality as well. Now it's time for my personal opinion. You've already seen that I've tried those strings in the intro of the video. My personal preferred gauge for E flat standard is 1149 and I prefer the Elixir NanoWeb 1149s. I like the soft feel of the NanoWeb coating and I like the percussive sound that the NanoWebs have. I do a lot of down picking but I'm not a heavy hitter, I don't pick heavily. Personally, I didn't like the Paradigm strings, I don't have any benefit from them. It wasn't much of a surprise that the Papa Head strings will not replace my preferred NanoWeb 1149s. I wanted to try them out though and I wanted to give you guys my opinion about them. I will be keeping this green box for my picks though, it's sweet and I suggest you try those strings. 
Something important I have to mention, I started the video with the 76 Gibson Les Paul Custom Iron Cross and the 2014 ESP Iron Cross Custom Shop. Both of those guitars are extremely expensive and have the best tuners possible. The Gibson has the 76 original tuners, which are one of the best I've tried, and the Iron Cross has the Spurzel locking. I did my best to pick as heavy as possible, I even stiffened up at some point. But even with heavy picking, I couldn't get them to sound out of tune. How would the LTD do? Well, I hit this thing as hard as I possibly could without going completely out of tempo. Even with the cheap LTD tuners, those strings did okay. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. If you like the guitars in it and you wanna see more about them, there will be reviews of the ESP Iron Cross, the Gibson Iron Cross and the LTD Iron Cross coming up in my channel real soon. Hit the damn like and subscribe buttons.